Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Adventures with Parker, and hello from the beautiful state of Pennsylvania, this time here at Kennywood, just outside of Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm really excited for uh, this park. There's a lot of awesome posters here, such as Phantom's Revenge and Steel Curtain. And I mean, a few other things too. I mean, this park is known for having a balance of classic coasters and modern coasters. So I think it's going to be a good day. So without any further ado, let the Kennywood Adventures begin. I started my morning with breakfast at First Watch a local restaurant about 15 minutes from the park. I arrived at Kennywood around noon and could already tell that the park was starting to get a little busy. Maybe busier than I expected it to be, to be honest. But still, I was optimistic about the day that lay ahead. So the entrance to this park is kind of weird because you park and enter the park on the other side of the street then you have to go through this tunnel to actually get into the main part of the park. But you know, I've already at this point scanned in my ticket and all that good stuff. Yeah, here we are. We are in Kennywood. Now here's a coaster that I had no idea it existed until just now, and that is Skyrocket. And it looks pretty interesting. I love me a good launch coaster. did my first ride of the day here at Kennywood Skyrocket. So there was a temporary delay just before I got on, which seems to be a common occurrence for me on this trip. So uh, I had to wait a little longer than I was hoping to. Overall, the ride was, ride was okay. I mean, the launch was fun and you get a good pop of airtime at the top, but then it kind of slows down. Like it almost stops you at the top. I don't know, it, it was weird. Other than that, the inversions were fun, but then the ending kind of got a little slow and kind of became a little boring. So yeah, I guess my overall sentiments are it's fun, but there's a reason why it flew under my radar. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you guys are probably well aware that I am a huge fan of classic dark rides and quirky things of that sort. And this here is the Old Mill, which is a log flume style ride that is over a hundred years old. And just recently they gave it a renovation to update it and kind of return to its uh, more historical nature. Cause I think it was a, uh, it was a Garfield ride for a while. So it's kind of nice to see that it's the Old Mill once again. Yes, you can see right here, this ride was built in 1901, was completely reconstructed in 1926, and uh, it was the Garfield ride for a while. Also, if you want to learn more about the history of this ride, I highly recommend you check out my friend's Storybook Amusements video on it. I will leave a uh, link in the description. It's a great video, so go check it out. A stinker. No trespassing. Smell what Harold's thinking. Oh, he 
escape. It's reaching. It's trying. Is that a cat on the gun or it's a kitty cat? There he is in the stocks. Unable to escape. Is that a skunk? It's a skunk. Okay, so that was weird. I mean, in the best way, but <laughs> not at all what I was expecting. It was still fun though. I liked the whole like silent movie aspect to it, but I had no idea what was going on. Like something about he was being stinky, but there was a skunk and he was trying to escape. I, I don't get it, but it was fun. And I mean, this kind of old school, classic quirky stuff is right up my alley. So yeah. <laughs> And if you got any yarns, you can swap them here with Cowboy Joe. Sorry, Cowboy Joe, I, I don't have any yarns on me today. Maybe next time. I have no idea who this is. Americans, help me out. Who is this? Is that George Washington? I don't know. So Kennywood is actually designated as a National Historic Landmark. Very cool. This crazy contraption right here is the one and the only kangaroo. The only ride of its kind in the world making its grand return here in 2022. Uh, they got rid of it a few years ago, but now it's back looking better than ever. It uh, received a refurbishment from, I wanna say Premier Rides. If I'm wrong, I'll correct it with some text. Uh, so good to see it up and running. Now the line for this ride seems a little crazy right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go do some other things and come back to it. But this is definitely something I'm gonna do before the end of the day. Besides the roller coasters and the old mill, this ride was at the top of my list. So we'll be back in a bit. All right, moving on. We are heading into Steelers country to do this monstrosity of a coaster. This is Steel Curtain, of course, named after the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh man, this coaster looks absolutely insane. I'm so excited. All right, let's do it. So unfortunately, they're only running one train on Steel Curtain today. So it looks like we're going to be in for a long wait, but I'm sure that it's gonna be worth it. I just got off of Steel Curtain, which was just a fantastic ride all the way around. It had some really great transitions, some great inversions, even a few pops of airtime. So all in all, I am very happy with that ride. Now, um, the sign going in did say that it would be an hour and 45 minute wait. And it was a long wait, but it wasn't quite that long. It was only an hour and 20 minutes maybe. So not bad and, and totally worth it. Like I, I was so happy with that ride. Okay, let's see what's next. So this weekend is the Bites and Pints Food Festival here at Kennywood. Serving food and dishes from around the world. So you have Germany, Poland. I can't see what's over there, but 
they have these kind of things all over the park. And as the foodie I am, you know I'm gonna have to try something before I go. This area of the park is really busy right now. Both the racer and Jackrabbit have crazy lines that are spilling out of their queues. So I think I'm gonna head to the other side of the park in just a moment. While I'm here, I'm gonna check out the Bites and Pints Food Festival. I could really go for a snack right now and they seem to have some great options. So I'm gonna see what the booths have to offer and try something. Okay, so this is the kibasa dish from the pull-in booth and it looks so yummy. Oh my goodness, it has sausage, onions, noodles, just the whole works. I'm so excited to dig into this. Also, I've taken my food to a completely different section of the park because it was just so chaotic over there. I mean, there were some tables, like, you know, the kind of tables where you can place your food and stand and eat. But yeah, it was just way too crowded for my taste. That's some good kibasa. So this is Ghostwood Estate, which I believe is an old school haunted house ghost train kind of dark ride but it is closed today, which makes me super sad because again, these are exactly the kind of rides that I just adore and have a real soft spot for. I mean, I'm sure I'll be back eventually, but yeah, I, I would have loved to do it if it was open. Okay, so according to this big gate, we are now entering Pittsburgh's Lost Kennywood. I didn't know uh, Kennywood was lost, but hopefully we can find it through here. So there's a whole other part of the park over here? I I had no idea. <laughs> Mind you, I didn't do a lot of research for Kennywood. A lot of times when I visit a park, I kind of know it before I even step foot in the place, but that was not the case for this one. So I'm really just exploring and discovering the park as I go. So it doesn't look like Black Widow is open today, but look at this awesome entrance for it. Wow, and that's this ride right here. Oh wow, this is the most colorful Music Express I've ever seen in my life. Wow, that's just really mesmerizing. So cool. Also, I finally found the Phantom's Revenge entrance. I can't believe this was so hard to find. It's just so far removed from the ride station and the exit. Like, they're on total opposite ends of the coaster here. But the important thing is, is that we did find it and we're going to ride it. Look at that adorable little turtle ride down there. Oh, that's so cute. And a really old kind of ride too. You really don't see this at a lot of places, but these would have been super popular back in the day. Okay, we're almost to the station. This wait really wasn't all that bad. I don't know exactly how long I've been in line, but it couldn't have been more than 30 minutes. So quite happy with uh, how this wait turned out. Oh my god! Phantom's Revenge was insane! So good! Oh man. Okay, so the one thing that really kind of made the ride stick out for me was its restraint. Instead of coming down to you from the front, they actually come down from the side and it just created this really free open experience on the ride and I was in the back. I, I got some mad ejector. Oh, that was so cool. I, I, really like that one. Oh, and that second jump was incredible, especially with that like head chopper moment with Thunderbolt. Just fantastic ride all around. Now, one old school ride that I've always wanted to do is the whip. And I've seen a few on my trip already at other parks. Like there's one at Knobles, but I didn't have time for it. There's one at Hershey Park, but it was closed. So now that I'm at Kennywood, this is my last chance to get on one of these. And of course, I had to hop in line, and I'm excited to cross this ride off of my uh, flat ride bucket list.
Okay, that was so much fun. So simple, but so fun. The way you just fly around those corners, that just made me giddy. So far, we've just been doing the park steel coasters, but I think it's time that we do one of their wooden ones. And I can't think of a better one to start with than Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, which is one of the oldest wooden roller coasters in North America. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I liked how it kind of went down the mountain a bit, just kind of, you know, down into the hills. That was just a really cool aspect. And um, yeah, another Buzzfire wooden coaster. Those are always fun. Oh, another thing I forgot to say about Thunderbolt. You do need a partner to ride. So if your group is an odd number or if you're a single rider, uh, they'll try to pair you up. But it makes me wonder why they don't have a designated single rider queue. Like, if you need a partner, that should be a given. And it looks like the Haunted Mansion, uh, or what's it called? Ghostwood Estate. Yeah, so this has finally opened up and I'm so happy about that. I was a little sad to see it closed earlier. So let's hop in line. Oh, wow. Oh, it's like the stretching room. Welcome guests to Ghostwood Estate. My name is Lord Kenneth Ghostwood, and I built this house as a refuge for myself centuries ago. After my death, many other occupants have come, but none have left. The house is now extremely overcrowded with spirits, and I desperately need your help to get rid of them. I will provide you with a transportation buggy and a ghost blaster. Your job is to blast as many spirits as possible, to help me regain my solitude. Beware that the spirits will hide behind targets. Aim at the targets and you will find the spirits. There will be four of you on a buggy and you will compete against each other. The one with the highest score at the end will have a special invitation to spend eternity with me. Ghost of the States is a very interesting dark ride. I loved all of the animatronics in it, but it also combines it with your, uh, you know, ghost blaster system. And it's trackless too, I think it is anyways. It looked like it was trackless. Um, it was just super unique and um, not at all what I was expecting. So uh, I'm glad I got to uh, do that while I was here. And to think that I almost missed out, wow. Another very iconic and historical part of Kennywood is Noah's Ark, which is a fun house. You don't see a lot of fun houses at theme parks these days, so it's really cool that Kennywood has this, and I believe it's been going for a long, long time. But yeah, uh, let's go check it out. So we got the uh, cargo of the ark here. Flamingos. Flamingos.
Okay, Noah's Ark was uh, pretty trippy. <laughs> like I said, I, I love just old school fun houses and just weird things like that. Kennywood in general is just right up my alley. It has all of those vintage, quirky, nostalgic things that I just love. Now we are getting close to the end of the day. We have a little over two hours left and I still need to do those wooden coasters that I said I'd come back to later. Well. I think maybe now is the time to head back and get those credits. So not that I'm planning on doing any rides in here, but I had to check out Thomas Town, which is an entire kids area themed to Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes, they have one of these fire brigade rides which looks so fun for the kids. So cool to have these interactive kind of rides here. Okay, so here we have all the Thomas characters and it looks like they do a show with them too. Looks like I missed the last show, but I'm guessing they come to life and speak and whatnot. I don't know. Cool that it's here. And check out this kitty drop tower. It doesn't look like it's running today, but I love how they uh, turned it into uh, the Thomas screen. There's also a Thomas Town gift shop and you can see the one and only Thomas the Tank Engine right here front and center. Looks like most of this merchandise is for kids which makes sense. But of course plushies have no age limit. <laughs> Very cute. Today is Jackrabbit, which is another historical coaster here at Kennywood. It's been around for, I want to say, 100 years. This is the one wooden coaster I was most looking forward to because, from what I've heard, even though it seems to lack in height and all of those stats, it seems to have a little bit of a bite to it. So, I'll let you know how it is. Okay, there's that date I was looking for. This coaster opened in 1920, making it 102 years old and still looking fine. Okay, remember how I said that I thought that the Jackrabbit would be small but mighty? Man, was that statement correct. It really did pack an extra little punch that you don't see coming. <laughs> so yeah, don't let it size fool you. That, that double down into the valley. That was the best moment of the ride for me. And did I mention that the only thing holding you in is a seatbelt? So this shooting gallery here shoots water right back at you and I'm standing in line for the racer and I got squirted real bad. Another coaster designated as a historic landmark 
The Racer was built in 1927, so it's a little bit younger than Jackrabbit, but still a uh, neat little piece of history that Kennywood has. The Racer is also an ace roller coaster landmark, which doesn't really mean much to anyone except us coaster enthusiasts, but I mean, it's a cool designation. Trade one! I mean, the coaster was fun, but what? the important part is that we won! In all seriousness, the racer is cool because it's a Mobius loop coaster, which means that both sides of the coaster are on the same track. So if you started on the left side, you'll pull into the station on the right side. So it switches somewhere in the course of your run. But yeah, overall, fun ride. Okay, we've got about half an hour before the park closes. And as I said earlier, there's one ride that I had to come back to one thing that I had to do before I left the park, and that is the kangaroo. Okay, that was scary. <laughs> there was a sign saying that the ride was closed, and I thought I had missed out on my chance, but then the ride off let me in just because it was just me. So thank you to that person. Oh, I'm so glad I made it. Okay, I just finished up my first ever visit to Kennywood with a ride on Kangaroo. That was a fun ride. Oh, lights are off, okay. So the park is closed now, but um, yeah, that, that was my last ride of the night. So fun, I mean, I, I've said this a million times already, but I love these classic old school rides. I, I'm just easily amused, I guess. <laughs> but I know that ride holds a lot of nostalgia for Kennywood locals and uh, just people who have been around the park for a long time. So I'm glad that it's back this year and that I got to partake in that experience. Anyways, thank you for joining me on this Kennywood adventure. Uh, I, I had a great day. I liked the park more than I thought I was going to. I mean, I, I didn't expect to dislike the park, obviously. Like, I came here for a reason, but I was pleasantly surprised by my day. Now, today was a busy day. That was kind of the only negative part of it, I guess. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting it to be this busy. It's Friday. Kids have school, right? But, oh, well, I still got to do everything I wanted to do. I did miss out on one coaster credit, and that was Exterminator, but it's just a wild mouse, an indoor wild mouse, so I'm sure it would have been cool, but I, it didn't matter much to me, you know? So once again, thank you so much for joining me here at Kennywood. Tomorrow, I'm hitting up Cedar Point. So if you would like to see more of my theme park, travel, local, and outdoor adventures, be sure to subscribe. I have lots of great content coming soon. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys go and check that out. You can also find me on social media at ADB Parker and on Patreon, where you can support the channel for as little as a toonie a month for lots of awesome bonus content like extra vlogs and mail and all that good stuff. And if you would like to rock some designs inspired by my adventures, you can also check out my merch shop, Adventure Outpost. There's lots of cool products coming out on there now. So yeah, go uh, check it out. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, the adventures are calling. See ya. Ghostwood, Ghostwood Estate. I'm blocking traffic, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>